<laughs> Hi friends, this is Papa Dale here one more time with another great Bible nutshell. This is one a little more than a hundred that uh, we are producing to help edify the church, the body of Christ, and to leave as a legacy of content for folks after the rapture, folks who may suddenly realize that they need to be interested in what the Bible teaches, and so they're looking for ways to learn of that, and the Holy Spirit will have this and be able to direct them to this body of content. So who am I? I'm Papa Dale. I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, evangelist, Christian ed director, uh, gosh, a businessman. <laughs> uh, my whole career has been uh, a varied uh, bunch of different roles. And um, in that process, I've uh, participated in a great deal of education and Christian service. If you want to know more about that, you can look up my YouTube uh, video on this channel on one of the Bible-related playlists, and you'll find it under the title of Papa Dale Intro, and that is video number zero. But for now, put on my glasses so I can have a look at my notes, and we are going to discuss a highly theological, a couple of highly theological concepts um, expiation and propitiation. This is Bible Nutshell number 67, Christ our expiation and propitiation. Expiation does not appear in the New Testament as a word, but it does as a concept. It is very closely linked with propitiation, and together these two can be seen as opposite sides of the same coin of atonement. They are theological terms, each used to explain a different viewpoint of a similar concept. Expiation is when guilt is cleansed. We are no longer liable to pay for sin's penalty. God's holiness is satisfied in the death of Christ, and he need not exercise his wrath and judgment of man's sin. In his mercy... It has been removed. Guilt is cleansed. It is the elimination of the need for judgment. God, quote, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. End quote. 2 Corinthians 5.19 Thank God for that. Thank God that we are not guilty before him anymore because of what he has done. Praise his name. Propitiation, the other of our theological terms for today, is when God's sense of justice is satisfied with the death of Christ for our sin. Remember, we've discussed a couple of times in the in past, pardon me, a couple of times in past nutshells, the idea that the characteristics of God, his essential, basic um, character qualities are perfect and holy and infinite, and no one of them is any of any greater importance than the other. So his perfect love and his perfect justice uh, can come into tension um, when he loves man uh, with a full godlike infinite love, but on the other hand, mankind has sinned. What's he going to do about that? He's got a sense of justice that needs to be satisfied, as well as a sense of love. And so that's the tension that, uh, that exists in the person of God. We escape the judgment of our sin, which we rightly deserve by means of God's grace. God himself took the punishment in man's place, a vicarious substitution. Quote, Therefore he, Christ, had to be made like his brothers, us, in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation 
for the sins of the people. Hebrews 2, 17. Now, pagans believed that their gods could be propitiated by offering to them the gifts of their labor, food, incense, and the like. It was all about what they did. It's all about what the people did. The responsibility was the persons to figure out a way of doing something to appease the pagan god. Not so with the Christian god Yahweh. Scripture teaches that our own efforts are never sufficient to be able to expiate our guilt before God or propitiate the wrath of our perfectly holy God and bring reconciliation. Can't be done. We, we, don't, have, we don't have the ability. Therefore, the only solution was for him, Yahweh, to provide the sacrifice, for him to be the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Thank God that he was willing to do that. As our substitute for sins, Christ's death is the expiation, the appeasement that cleanses all guilt so that we are no longer the target of Yahweh's wrath. Christ's propitiation for our sins is the necessary payment of the dead owed that is the penalty of sins, death, Romans 3.26. So on the one hand, we are no longer counted as guilty, and on the other hand, it is because the debt has been paid. Christ paid it all. <laughs> we have nothing to do but to believe and accept it. It's a free gift, Ephesians 2.8 and 9. For by grace... Are we saved? And that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, if it was there was something that we could do, we could go to God on Judgment Day and we could say, See what a great person I was. See, I did this. See, I did that. I, I, I paid my tithes. I joined the church. I, I treated people nice. It's all me, 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 me. <laughs> doesn't work like that. For Yahweh, it's all him, 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 him. He created us. We sinned. We walked away. And he became the sacrifice for our sins. Both the expiation and the propitiation. Thank God for that. And so, that was Bible Nutshell number 67. Christ, our expiation and propitiation. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can leave them in the comments section down below. Uh, or there is a link to my Facebook page, Dale Warren at Facebook. You can leave them there as well. And you can begin a conversation with me if you wish. And uh, also at the bottom of this video, there are there is a link to the lesson notes where you can read through them a little slower, and you can pause on each scripture passage and look it up. And I suggest you do that. Don't trust me. I might lie to you. I'm a human being. <laughs> I don't think I am. I wouldn't want to. It's not in my heart to. But you know what? There are people out there that would. And so it's best that no matter what teaching you listen to, no matter what teacher, you always double check them. Be in Acts chapter 17, Berean, and check the word, whether the things that were taught are so. Well, that's it for today. That is Bible Nutshell number 67, Christ our expiation. And so, until the next video, which is about, uh, I don't know, let me look it up here. Okay, I can't find it. So, it's going to be a good one, though. <laughs> I guarantee you, it's going to be a good one. I wrote it. It's based on the Bible. It's going to be a good one. So, until the uh, next Bible Nutshell, which will be number 68, I know that much. <laughs> this is Papa Dale signing off and praying for you that you would be well and be blessed. <laughs>